70 years old? Yes. Seven? Yes. Seven? Oh. Yes. Seven? Oh. Yes. <laughs> seven? Oh. Seven? Oh. Seven? Oh. Hey everybody, I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. And I hope you had a good, happy, safe summer week. And you know what? I am on a staycation this week. So I wasn't supposed to make a video. I was just, well, I called up a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. And every day I've done something special with them and, and caught up and had picnics and Anyway, it's been a wonderful week, but I watched a video where this woman was 70 years old and, and they brought her on stage and, and everybody was guessing her age to be in her 30s and I thought, uh oh, <laughs> this is amazing and I had to share this with you. Even though the video is a little dated, the things in that video are still relevant, but they only touched on a few things. They missed the bulk of why this woman looked 20, 30 years younger than she really is, was, is. <laughs> I want to go through step by step why I think this woman looked so young and how we all can take 15 years of how we look in an instant and it's all free. So I had to do this video and I'm so glad you're here. So let's dive right in on how we can look fabulous at any age. I just made that up. That was so corny. I'm sorry. <laughs> video and I am in a trance wondering why does everyone think this woman who's 70 looks 35 and you know when she goes out on stage she has this lovely uh, fitted dress and she's wearing heels and her makeup is very chic and very contemporary even for you know now even though this is an older video she is timeless so I'm thinking to myself, what is the first thing I'm noticing that makes me think this woman could be in her 30s or 40s? And it is the shape of her body. Oh, a woman's figure that is smaller in the middle than on top or on the bottom. You just do not expect that kind of hourglass look to a woman's body once she is past a certain age. And I'm looking at it and actually it wasn't that she really had an hourglass figure. It was that she was in a dress, she was in a wrap dress, and it gave the illusion that she actually had more shape to her body than she did. So often you have told me, you know what? I am thick around the middle and that's just the way it is and I'm throwing in the towel and I'm just going to wear caftans. <laughs> well, don't do that. Okay, so maybe, you know, you're never going to have that little 28 inch waist <laughs> again, but you can do things that will camouflage what's going on in the middle of your body and make you look like, you know, you've got that kind of Marilyn Monroe thing going on. Peplum tops will do that. Peplum jackets will do that. Any type of very beautiful dress, you know, with a jacket that kind of cuts in a little bit, that gives the illusion that you have a waistline. But anything that you can personally come up with that gives you, 
just a slightly smaller silhouette around your middle, it takes years off. But if everything that I do to keep the middle of my body from expanding, I think the most effective thing I do is walking. Did you notice that beautiful lady when she walked up on stage, that beautiful smile she had? And Joni Mitchell has a song, Happiness is the Best Facelift, and isn't that true? When we smile, we not only radiate joy, which makes us seem so young, because how many older people do you know that are always cracking jokes and laughing and, and loving their life? A lot of times with some of the older people that we have in our lives, such as ourselves, <laughs> we do a little bit of whining. We do a little bit of, you know, well, things aren't the way they used to be. And we're not tapping into our joy. Well, it's hard to tap into your joy when you're in pain or you have medical things going on. But when you can tap into that joy, really tap into it, harness it and try to live it every day, no matter what. But there's something about joy and happiness. When we smile, it takes 10 years off our face. It hides those jowls. Okay, it brings out the crow's feet, but isn't it worth it? smile. Every time we smile, all the muscles we use to smile, it triggers something in our brain to be happy, to put the anxiety aside. So yeah, happiness is the very best facelift. a survey where they showed men pictures of older women and they had to guess their age and the women that had more of a shallow complexion uh, the women that were more pale or more grayish they guessed those women to be older and we have always known this. That's why we're so big on exfoliating our skin, you know, getting rid of the dead skin cells that makes us look dull. But no matter how hard we try sometimes, when you are getting into your late 60s and 70s, you can look gray and dull. And there are special things you need to do, like peels that you can do at home, uh, they're very inexpensive, non-intrusive peels, but just, you know, like a pretty heavy-duty exfoliating mask will brighten you up so much. Anything with retinol or uh, a Retin-A will brighten you up also. Another thing you can do is go to your dermatologist or your plastic surgeon. <laughs> I have mine on speed dial. No, I don't. I've never had anything done. I probably should, but I never have, and I never will. You can go to your dermatologist and you can sign up for three peels. And that usually runs about $50 and they'll do one per week. It doesn't hurt, but each week it gets a little bit stronger than the week before. That is amazing. Now I haven't done it in five years because I feel like brightness really isn't my issue, 
but when it was, those peels were amazing. And I really would like to have a series of peels done. But that's an option for you too. And I'll list a little bit more information about some of the peels that you can have done that are not expensive and non-intrusive. So in our society, brightness is associated with happiness and youth. So when we go to choose that coat or that blouse or those pair of earrings or that hairdo or that hair color, keep in mind that the brighter we go, the brighter we seem and the happier and younger we appear. So I'm just throwing that out there because, I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than a beautiful dark haired woman in a red dress, right? Something, something bright. Yeah, and so much we are taught, oh, chic is just one solid dark color. Yeah, uh, chic can be kind of aging and kind of boring. When I was watching that beautiful woman walk on stage, another thing I noticed was her posture. Her posture was so good. And when our posture is good, it just elongates our body. If we have any little funky thing going on with our neck, it kind of stretches our neck out. Plus, it makes us feel good. We're kind of sticking our chest out. You know, it, it shows confidence. And, and happiness. So our posture is fantastic. The more we exercise, the more we dance, the more we walk, the, the more in tune we are with our body and the more we can remember to stand up straight. That's all we need to help with our posture. Just be aware of it. Our vocal cords are so important and as we age they get even more important than they have ever been in our lives. But it's so important that we exercise our vocal cords every day. You either use it or you lose it. You need your voice and you don't want a, a shaky voice with your vocal cords all damaged from drinking or smoking or not talking, not singing, not exercising your voice every single day. Okay, you don't like to sing. How about just going over the, the scales? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Why not do that? Or, or maybe just uh, recite poems in a really loud voice. How about the, your favorite lyrics to a song and you recite them every day for five minutes as loud as you can. You know, don't strain your voice, but there's so many videos on how we can help our vocal cords give us a beautiful, rich voice. And why do we really want that booming voice as we age? One of the things we battle as we get older is isolation and loneliness. Now imagine you're at a wedding reception, you're happy to be there, but you never use your voice because you live alone and you've got nobody to talk to. So you're sitting there and you want to join the conversation, you're in a great mood, but nobody can hear you because your voice is so soft and so shaky. You sound like you're 90 years old. You're not 90, but you sound like you're 90. Well, you don't actually have to have a, a tiny shaky voice when you're 90. All you really need to do is set aside 15 minutes a day of talking, singing, just getting your vocal cords warmed up and exercised. 
I don't know why, but in my 40s, I started to have this little collection of like Mr. Rogers cardigans. I guess I felt like I looked so young that it didn't matter that I could put on a little matching cardigan and I would look just fine. You know, I'd be like a sweet Olivia Newton-John in Greece, right? With a, Anyway, oh, wasn't that sad she passed away? I loved her. There has to come a time in a mature woman's life where she just says, you know, those Mr. Rogers cardigans, I think their time has come and gone. I think it's so much more youthful for us if, if we put on that great outfit, you know, maybe a dress or a skirt and a blouse, and then instead of a cardigan, how about a little peplum jacket? How about a jean jacket? How about a moto jacket? Any type of garment <laughs> that will keep us warm that isn't a very conservative cardigan. And I know deep down, I love them. It isn't like the caftans that, that's like wearing a tent. No, the cardigans I think are, they're cute, but I just don't wear them because they are so aging. So I own two moto jackets. I own a jean jacket that is a peplum type style. If I get time, I want to show you some of the things that I have substituted my little cardigans for something maybe a little bit more hip. But there is a huge thing that I need to learn, that I need to incorporate in the way that I dress. There's a few things. But as I'm getting closer to 70, I realize that I have to wear clothes that are more fitted to my body. I also want to wear more solids. Because when you're chic, when you are completely understated in everything you're wearing, like maybe you're just wearing some pants, black pants, tan blouse, silver necklace, silver earrings, and some black loafers, and that's it. You're so dramatically understated that you make this huge statement of, wow, wow. <laughs> You know, maybe very light makeup, but a red lip or just something. I mean, just so understated. No florals, you know, no frills, just completely sophisticated. And that's slowly but surely, that's what I am coming to. And it's going to take a while for me to transition. But I do think that less is more. that you are now, do you still dream? Do you have things that you want to do? Do you ever allow yourself to say things like, well, maybe in the future, I'll do that. Maybe next year, I'll enroll in, in some college classes. Maybe next year, I'm going to join a dating site and maybe just start going out to dinner with maybe a new fabulous man. Or how about, you know what? In the next couple years, I think I'm going to start writing that book I've always wanted to write. Do you talk like that? Do you think like that? Do you live like that? This week on my staycation, I wanted to share with you that I called up so many old friends and every day I did something special with an old friend that I haven't seen in a long time. 
And my good friend Hal and I, we went up to Lookout Hill where uh, the baseball diamond is, where my grandfather used to take me as a little girl. And he asked me, why are we up here? We're, of all the places we could have a picnic, why are we up here? And I said, because I want to come up here and look down on the baseball field and remember when I was a kid and I had so many dreams. And I knew in my heart, when my hand was in my grandfather's hand, I knew he had my back and I knew I had my whole life ahead of me and I could do anything that I wanted. And I want to feel that again. I want to remember that I used to feel that way. Because when I get down sometimes, I do feel like, well, you know, I had my life. Now I can see the beginning, the middle, and end of my life, and blah, blah, blah. And that's a horrible way to think and live and talk. And some of my language with my friends was becoming a little bit fatalistic. Well, I guess it's time I cleaned out the closets in case something ever happens to me and my son might have to come. Stop. I think so much of what we project. Yeah, it's our figure. It's our outfit. It's our brightness. But it's also our conversation. Our heart. And when people find out that we still have a dream, they want to they wanna help us achieve that dream. And we inspire them. And we plant the seed in younger women that age really is nothing to be afraid of. It's something to embrace. 70 years old? Yes. Seven, yes. seven, oh, yes. Seven, oh, yes. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And if you get a chance down below, could you share something that you do that makes you feel absolutely fabulous? Have yourself a wonderful, happy, safe summer week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right. It's a deal. We'll be here.